Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at Minecraft performance on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. Mostly I'm going to be comparing the Intel Rosetta 2 build of Minecraft with the native ARM build. And if there's one thing I hope that you take away today is that you should be running the native ARM version of Java in order to get the best performance out of Minecraft. Unfortunately, the default version of Minecraft that you can download from the official website only contains the Intel Java code. And therefore, in order to work on the M1 ARM architecture, it needs to run through the Rosetta 2 translation there, which is going to make it far slower than if we run it through the native ARM build of Java. If you'd like to find out how to get Minecraft running natively on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, then please check out the video tutorial. I'll leave a link to this in the description. I also have a playlist of individual tutorials, which will teach you the various different methods of installing Minecraft, as well as different mods and also shaders as well. So before we begin, I'd like to go through the methodology that I'm using in order to test Minecraft on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So the very first thing is that we are running at 1440p at 120 hertz. The refresh rate of the screen is not going to be that relevant as we are running at unlimited frame rate with VSync off in all of these instances. Secondly, within the Rosetta 2 instance, I'm using Java version Zulu 17, and I've also allocated 6 gigabytes to Java. In the vanilla ARM version, I'm using the native version of Zulu 17, which has been built for ARM 64. I'm also using six gigabytes of RAM. And we're also using the M1 MultiMC hack in order to get native ARM Java working. I've chosen to use the Intel version of MultiMC as I'd like to easily be able to compare the Rosetta 2 and ARM versions of the world and be able to easily clone them and change the settings of each one within a single window. I have also tested a fork of MultiMC called ManyMC, which has been built for native ARM. However, I've chosen to continue using MultiMC just for ease of use of comparing Rosetta 2 and ARM versions. And also I have tested MultiMC versus ManyMC and in-game performance performance is pretty much identical. So therefore I've chosen to stick with MultiMC for my testing. So the very first performance test we're going to do is going to be comparing the actual launch speed of the games for MultiMC. So this is one of those underrated performance metrics. However, you might be surprised at how much of a difference running this natively through ARM will make. So here I sped up the footage by 300% so we can see this in action. And as you can see, the native ARM version has loaded up the game within 15 seconds. On the Rosetta 2 side on the left, the game is still loading, whilst on the native ARM side, we're able to get fully in-game even before the Rosetta 2 version has even loaded up the main menu. So next up, we are testing world loading. So we have two identical worlds. Here we can see that the native ARM version will fully load within seven seconds, whilst the Rosetta 2 version is still stuck at 7% loading. And if we let the Rosetta 2 version continue loading, you can see that it renders the chunks much more slowly and it takes a little bit of time for the very last cloud to pop up. And we have a time of 28 seconds, 66 milliseconds. So here I'm just gonna demonstrate what video settings we're using on vanilla Minecraft. So the most important thing is that we've set the render distance to 12 chunks and simulation distance to 12 chunks. We've got graphics set to fancy, smooth lighting set to maximum, clouds fancy, as well as all of these settings too. So again, here we're comparing Rosetta 2 on the left with native ARM on the right. And with native ARM, we're getting 230 to 240 FPS, which is almost double the Rosetta 2 frame rate of 129, 130 FPS. Whilst the ARM performance is substantially better than Rosetta 2, a lot of people say that using Optifine can give similar results. However, if we use Optifine in combination with ARM, then we can actually get a much better rendering speed as well. So here these settings I'm using for Optifine. So we have the Optifabric and Optifine mods installed in MultiMC. If you'd like to know how to do this, you can follow one of the tutorials in the description of this video. Within Minecraft itself, we have the render distance set to 12 chunks and the simulation distance set to 12 chunks. Graphics are fancy with smooth lighting set to maximum. Here I'm just going to show you the quality menu that I'm using as well as the performance menu that I'm using. Here will also show the detail settings and also the animation settings too. Also my dynamic light setting is turned off. So here we can see the Optifine frame rate counters for Rosetta 2 and native ARM. So the left number is the average frame rate and the number after the slash is the minimum frame rate. So you can see on the Rosetta 2 side, we're getting an average frame rate of around 158, 160 FPS with a minimum frame rate that ranges between around 50 to 80 FPS. Whereas on the native ARM side, we're getting a much higher average frame rate and also a much higher minimum frame rate, almost double in both instances. At the bottom of the screen, we're gonna compare the vanilla version of of Minecraft with the Optifine version at the top. And as you can see, the Optifine version brings quite a large performance boost in each instance and increasing FPS by about 30 on the Rosetta 2 side and about 70, 80 on the native ARM side. 
So not only is Optifine a mod that helps to increase Minecraft performance dramatically, it also allows us to use shaders, which are graphical enhancements that help to overhaul the aesthetic experience of the game. So here I'm just gonna run one of the most popular shaders, which are the Silda's Vibrant Shaders. I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description, as well as a tutorial video on how to get this to work. Here I'm running the light version, which is a version of the shaders which has one of the lowest impacts to performance. And as you can see, the game looks completely different, but this has come at the cost of frame rate. So this is much lower than it was on the vanilla version of Minecraft. So here we're running the high version of the shader and there isn't actually much performance impact when compared to the light shader. The main difference visually for me is the quality of the shadows, which don't tend to flicker as much as on the light version of the shader. Another quite striking visual difference is the quality of the water. And with the high shader, there's much more kind of depth and reflectiveness of the water, which definitely makes a difference on the visual impact. So lastly, we have the extreme version of the shaders. And as you can see, the frame rate has dropped to 20 to 21 FPS on both sides, whether it's Rosetta 2 or native ARM. And this is probably because the shaders make high use of the GPU and not the CPU. So we're not being bound by the Rosetta 2 translation layer. We're being bound by the GPU of the M1 Max chip in this instance. Personally, I don't see the appeal of the extreme shaders. I don't think it offers much of a visual difference from the high shaders, and the high shaders give much better overall performance. And I wouldn't consider the extreme shader a practical or a playable shader to play with. However, it's an interesting benchmark. So the other performance enhancing mod that people often talk about is Sodium which is a rendering engine replacement for the Minecraft client. So these are the mods that I'm using to run Sodium. I'm using the Fabric Loader as well as the Fabric API and I'm running an FPS display mod. I've also installed Iris as I'll be testing out shaders in a moment. Within the game itself, I set the render distance, shadow distance and simulation distance to 12 chunks. I've generally left the quality tab and the performance tab at the default settings. Within the advanced tab, it's quite important that you switch the chunk memory allocator from async to swap. If you run this through async, it's gonna cause a lot of stutter when you're moving around and loading new chunks. Swap is gonna be the way to go if you run this game. So here I've loaded up Sodium and Iris without any shaders, and there's already been a dramatic increase in frame rate due to the new rendering engine. So what's useful at this stage is to go ahead and compare Sodium and Iris against Optifine as well as vanilla Minecraft. So this is quite challenging to do because Optifine and Sodium have completely different graphical settings. I've tried to set something that is very similar. However, even very small changes in the graphic settings will have dramatic effects on the frame rates. But with the way that I set this up, it does look like Sodium does perform much better than Optifine. Optifine gives a small boost over vanilla Minecraft, but Sodium is nearly tripling the frame rate so now what we're gonna do is to directly compare Optifine and Sodium and Iris when using specific shaders. So here we've got Silda's Vibrant Shaders light running, and it does appear that Sodium does run the shader faster than it does on Optifine. But it isn't as dramatic as it was in the vanilla version of Minecraft where we were doubling frame rates. Here we're only increasing by about 30, 32 FPS on average. Here we switch to Silda's Vibrant Shaders high, and the gap between Optifine and Sodium and Iris is even smaller than before, only around 10 FPS difference in average frame rate. So high is the type of shader that I would normally use, and Optifine and Sodium and Iris are both able to deliver good frame rates, but Sodium is just a little bit better in this instance. Lastly, we have Silda's Vibrant Shaders Extreme, and paradoxically, Sodium and Iris don't have a lead in this instance. We're only getting around 15, 16 FPS, whereas on Optifine, we're having a steadier 21 to 20 FPS. I'm not exactly sure why this is, where Sodium and Iris has basically outperformed Optifine in every other test that I've done. However, this must be a specific quirk of this particular rendering engine. So this comes to the end of my testing. So as you might be able to tell, I'm not much of a Minecraft player myself. However, I do enjoy fiddling around with settings and mods. If you have any thoughts about the way that I perform these tests or any kind of tips for performance, I'd love to hear from you. Please leave a comment if you have any suggestions of things that I should test in the future. For me, the conclusion is pretty apparent. Both Optifine and Sodium and Iris both perform extremely well. However, the M1 Apple Silicon Mac is capable of very high frame rates. So any frame rate over 120 FPS is gonna be wasted on the ProMotion screen. So bringing the graphical fidelity up using shaders is the natural thing to do. And it feels like in most instances, Sodium and Iris is gonna perform slightly better 
than Optifine. However, I hope the lesson that we take away from here today is that the native ARM version of Minecraft is vastly superior to the Intel Rosetta 2 build, and that even doing something as simple as running the native ARM version using a mod like Sodium and Iris can increase frame rates in vanilla Minecraft by up to five times. Every M1 Apple Silicon Mac Minecraft player should definitely make use of the native ARM Java to run Minecraft as well as possible. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, please check out my other Minecraft tutorials on my second channel, and I'll see you in the next video.